let's look at multiplying two binomials. And remember, just for review, a binomial is a polynomial with two terms. All of these things are binomials. They have exactly two terms. And let's take a pictorial representation of a binomial as we've looked at pictorial representation, representations of polynomials. Here are four different faces. Two are linked together, two by two, with a plus sign. So um, graphically, we have two binomials, a happy face, a crying face, a screaming face, and a laughing face. Let's see what happens uh, when we multiply a binomial by a binomial. And of course, there's a rule for it. We have to multiply every term in the first binomial by every term in the second. And when we're finished, we may have some like terms. And we've got to clean that up afterwards by combining like terms. Let's investigate the situation algebraically. Here we have two binomials, a plus b times c plus d. And remember, we have to multiply the c plus d by the a and the b. And we can do it this way. First, we multiply a times the quantity c plus d. Then we use the same sign we have between the a and the b. If it's a plus, we put a plus there. If there's a minus between the a and the b, we put a minus there. Then we multiply b by the c plus d. And in a way, we've applied the distributive law once if you think of a plus b as one term. Next thing we need to do is use the distributive law again with a times c plus d and b times the quantity c plus d. When we use a times c plus d, we get that, ac plus AD, then we go B times C plus D is BC plus BD, and we link them with the same sign that we've used, plus or minus, linking the two we had before. So we wind up with four terms, which are all of the terms on the left, A and B, multiplied by all of the terms on the right. And if there are four separate terms in those binomials, we're going to get four separate things multiplied together every time. Pictorially, we can represent it this way. If we have a happy face, a crying face, a screaming and a laughing, let's see what happens. We first get a happy and a crying the first one on the left times the first one on the right, then happy and laughing, first one on the left times the second on the right, plus the second term on the left times the screaming, first on the right, and finally the second on the left times the last one on the right. So whenever you're dealing with two binomials multiplied together, you always get four terms. Of course, later you might be able to condense it a bit by looking for like terms, like terms. Let's look at this algebraically. First, we multiply x times x to get x squared. So we've multiplied x by the first term on the right. We next multiply the x by the second term on the right and get 4x. So we've dealt with multiplying the first term on the left by everything on the right. Now let's get the second term on the left by everything on the right. This gives us a 3x. And finally, we're left with the numbers, which 3 times 4 is 12. Next, we see that we have a 3x and 4x in the middle. I can combine those two terms, because they're just x, to 7x. So my final result for this is x squared plus 7x plus 12. There's a way of remembering these, a mnemonic, a memory device, and it uses a word, foil. Now, we can think of aluminum foil or rats foiled again that a villain might say. What I think of a foil is when you're fencing, that very thin sword that fencers sometimes use, as far as I know, I'm no fencer, is called a foil. But F 
O-I-L, gives me a very good way of making sure that when I multiply binomial by a binomial, I do it right. Let's look at some examples of how that works. Here's the same binomial we used before. Let's play some games with it using the idea of FOIL. The first thing I do is multiply the first terms. That's the X in the FOIL. Then I multiply the outer terms, the one that's all the way to the left and all the way to the right. So that's the F and O. F is the two first terms together, left and right binomial. O is the outside terms in both of the binomials, x times 4. The I stands for inner, and the L stands for last. So if you remember this, multiply first the first two terms in each binomial, the outer terms, the inner terms, and the last term. We're going to do it with these two binomials. The first term is 3a times 2a. The outer terms are 3a times 6. The inner term, the i in FOIL, is 8 times 2a. And the last terms are the 6 times 8. Now we need to actually perform the multiplications. 3a times 2a is 6a squared. 3 times 6 are 18a. 8 times 2 are 16a. 6 times 8 are 48. Next, we need to combine like terms. So finally, when I'm finished, 18a plus 16a is 34a. So when I'm done, I have 6a squared plus 34a plus 48. FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. Try another one. We have 8s times minus 4s, which is minus 32s squared. That's the first. The outer gives me 8 times 3 is 24s. The inner gives me minus 4s. And the two last terms multiplied together give me a 3. Again, I see that the two inner terms are like terms so that I can add those together and get minus 32s squared plus 24s minus 4s is 20s plus 3. This is not simple, so let's look at yet another example. We have the quantity 5x minus 5 times minus 7x plus 3. Let's multiply these. Here are the first terms multiplied together, 5x times a minus 7x. The outer terms, the O multiplied, 5x times 3. The inner terms, minus 5 times minus 7x. And the last terms, minus 5 times a plus 3. Next, we perform the multiplications indicated. 5x times a minus 7x is minus 35. x times x is x squared. 5x times 3 is 15x. Minus 5 times minus 7x. Minus times minus is a plus, so I get 35x. And finally, we throw the 15 in there. I notice the two inner monomials are like terms. So again, I can add those together. And my final result for multiplying these two binomials is this. Minus 35x squared, then 15x plus 35x gives me 50x minus 15. Here's a rule. To multiply a binomial by a binomial using the FOIL, or FOIL mnemonic, we multiply every term in the first binomial by every term in the second binomial in order of FOIL, first, outer, inner, and last. And finally, we combine like terms. Let's look at something related to this 
that we can use to practice. We need to remember as we do this that FOIL only works for binomials. If you have a binomial times a trinomial, you just have to remember to get every term in the first polynomial multiplied by every term in the second. But if you, it's very typically, in many, many different kinds of math problems, you'll find you have binomials times binomials, and FOIL will work for you. It can't be used for more complex polynomials, as I've indicated, but it's very useful. Let's look next at something very similar to what we've been doing, multiplying a binomial by a binomial. If we square a binomial, we're actually just multiplying the binomial by itself. We could use exactly the same procedure, but after we do a few of these, you'll see that there are some shortcuts if you're purely squaring something. But as I indicated before, if you forget what the shortcuts are, you can go back and use FOIL because it will always work, and you just remember that a binomial squared is the binomial times the binomial. Really, the best way to talk about it is to look at a particular example. Let's look at the quantity 3a minus 7, and we'll square it. We'll do it using the FOIL method. 3a minus 7 times 3a minus 7. The first terms multiplied together are 9a squared. The last term, the outer term, are minus 21a. Minus 7 times 3 is minus 21. The inner term is minus 21a again. And the last terms multiplied together, minus 7 times minus 7, is plus 49. Now I can combine like terms and get, as my final result, 9a squared minus 42a plus 49. Notice now, see if you can see a pattern developing. Let's look at another one. a plus 4, the quantity squared. So we're squaring a binomial, and again we're going to use the FOIL method. The first terms give me a squared. The outer terms give me 4a. The inner term gives me 4a. And the last terms give me 4 times 4, or 16. When I combine the like terms, I see that I get double the first times the last of the binomial, plus 16. So when we're done here, we have a squared plus 8a plus 16. Here comes our shortcut. We can do it by looking at a plus 4 squared, a fairly simple example that points it out very, very well. We have the square of the first term, twice the square of the first times the last term in the binomial, plus the square of the last term. Let's see how this works using minus 3r minus 5, the quantity squared. We square the first term. We take twice the first times the last term, twice minus 3r, times minus 5, plus the square of the last term, minus 5 squared. Now we do the math. Minus 3r, the quantity squared, minus 3 times minus 3 is 9, r times r is r squared. Minus 3 times minus 5 is plus 15, twice that is 30, and there's an r in there and minus 5 times minus 5 is plus 25. Let's look at the rule for doing this. To square a binomial, you square the first term. Then you add to the first term twice the first times the last term in the binomial. And then you add the square of the last term. And you can see here, just as this example goes, if I have a plus 4, that quantity squared I square the first term, get a squared. The first term times the last term in the binomial is 4a. If I double it, I get 8a. And then if I square the last term, I get 16. We're going to look now at another case that's very similar to squaring, but you have to be careful. We're going to talk now about multiplying conjugates. And as the 
binomials multiplied together here indicate, a conjugate is where you have 4n plus 6 times 4n minus 6, or 3n plus 4, the conjugate of 3m plus 4 is 3m minus 4. For example, here's a conjugate. Let's look at 7x plus 3 times its conjugate 7x minus 3. This is not a square because you see that the sign is different in this case and will lead us to a different result when we do the multiplication. Let's use the FOIL method to investigate these two quantities, 7x plus 3 times 7x minus 3. Multiplying the first terms gives me 49x squared. Multiplying the outer terms gives me minus 21x. Multiplying the inner, the i term, gives me plus 21x. And multiplying the last term gives me minus 9. Plus 3 times minus 3, plus times a minus is a minus, minus 9. When I go to combine terms, I notice something very interesting and useful happens. The middle terms, the outer and inner term, cancel. I have a minus 21x and a plus 21x. So that when I'm finished, the middle term disappears and I have the square of the first minus the square of the second term in terms of the conjugates. Let's formalize that and talk about conjugates. Conjugates are binomials which differ only by the sign between the terms. For example, as we've indicated before, x plus 3 and x minus 3 are conjugates. Let's multiply x plus 4 times x minus 4. They're conjugates of each other. Be careful because we notice here this isn't a problem squared because we have different signs. Let's use the FOIL method. The first gives me x times x or x squared. The outer gives me minus 4x. The inner gives me plus 4x. And the last gives me minus 16. Minus 4x plus 4x is 0x. When I'm finished, I have x squared minus 16, the square of the first minus the square of the second. When conjugates are multiplied, for example, 8q plus 7 times 8q minus 7, I can look at this immediately and say it's 64q squared, and notice the two inner terms, the inner term and the outer term cancel each other out, and so I have the square of the first minus the square of the second. It, we always find this with conjugates. The middle terms are additive inverses in conjugates and always add to zero. Let's do one more. 3m plus 4 times 3m minus 4. See if you can just look at this and decide what it is. We have 9m squared from the first term. We square that. Then we subtract the square of the second term. It's 9m squared minus 16. Multiplying conjugates, very straightforward because those middle terms cancel themselves out. We can make what we've been talking about into a rule. To multiply conjugates, here's what we do. We square the first and last terms and then take the difference. For example, if we have a plus 4 times a minus 4, we square the first term, a squared. We square the last term, 16, and take the difference, a squared minus 16. How about a quick quiz? Follow along with me. Try to identify any of the following as binomial conjugates, the square of a binomial, or a binomial with which we need to use the FOIL method a plus 3 times a plus 1. FOIL method because they're different. They're not either a square or conjugates. y plus 8 times y minus 1. Another candidate for the FOIL method because they're not related by either conjugates or square. 4t minus 1 times 4t plus 1. 
binomial conjugates because they're the same except for one has a negative sign between the terms, the other has a positive sign. Minus 4t minus 1 times the quantity minus 4t minus 1. They're exactly the same, so we're really talking about a square. And minus s minus 2t times the quantity minus s plus 2t, we're talking about conjugates because they're the same except for that middle sign. Let's go one step further and look at multiplying a binomial by a trinomial. Remember we indicated that we can't use the FOIL method because what exactly would be last here? What we have to do is multiply everything in the first term by everything in the second term. FOIL doesn't work here. FOIL is only good when you have binomials multiplied by binomials. Let's look at a rule. To multiply polynomials in general, here are the things you do. You multiply every term in the first polynomial by every term in the second polynomial. Then we combine terms and simplify. Let's use our dolls to see how this works. We take the first term in the binomial on the left and multiply it by each term in that trinomial. Then we take the second term in the binomial on the left and multiply that by each term in the trinomial. So if we multiply a binomial by a trinomial, we get six distinct terms and if we're actually doing it algebraically, some of them may be like terms that we can later combine. Here's a more mathematical example that we can use. We have x plus 4 times the trinomial 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. Let's work on this. First, we multiply x by each of those terms in the trinomial. So we have x times the quantity 3x squared plus x times the quantity 2x, plus x times 1. That takes care of x in the binomial. Now we work on the 4. We have 4 times 3x squared, 4 times 2x, and 4 times 1. We do the multiplications here and get 3x cubed, plus 2x squared, plus x, plus 12x squared, plus 8x, plus 4. Let's take a closer look at this same problem. We have x times 3x squared, which gives me 3x cubed, x times 2x, which gives me 2x squared, and x times 1, which give me x. Now I work on the 4s. 4 times 3x squared, 12x squared, 4 times 2x gives me 8x, and 4 times 1 gives me 4. Now I have to hunt up like terms, and so it's best if I put these in decreasing order, cubes, squares, first power, and so forth. Now I can spot the like terms. I see I have a 2x squared plus 12x squared, and I see I have an x and an 8x that I need to add together, so I can combine these, and my final answer in the most simple form is 3x cubed plus 14x squared plus 9x plus 4. Let's see if we can apply some of what we've learned to a verbal problem, to a word problem. Mary finds that she has 143 one square foot carpet tiles and they exactly cover her dining room floor. She notices something else, that if one side were shorter by one foot and the other side were longer by one foot, the tiles would make a perfect square. What's the size, the length and width of Mary's room? Let's look for the information. She has 143 one square foot carpet tiles and they exactly cover her dining room floor. But she notices the fl in terms of the floor that if one side were a foot shorter and the other side were a foot longer, we could make a perfect square. And from that we'd like to know what's the original length and width of her room will summarize the information. The area fits 143 square foot 
tiles. If we change the floor dimensions to get a square, there's the original room, so we'll add one side by one, make one foot longer and take one foot away from the other side, then we have a perfectly square room. And we'll let the size of the square be S. Then the original room, one side was one foot longer than S, the other side was one foot shorter than S. So we have S minus one on one side, S plus one on the other side. What's the length and width of the original room? Well, area is length times width, so we have 143 square feet, which is the number of carpet tiles that fit in that room, is equal to S plus one times S minus one. I notice that those are conjugates, so we want to find S using polynomial multiplication. S plus one times S minus one is going to be S squared minus one. By the rules we've learned, that's equal to 143. Now we have an equation we can solve. We see that if we add one to both sides of the equation, we'll get S squared as 144. Then if I take the square root of both sides of the equation, I find that S is 12. Now, knowing that, if S is 12 feet, that's the side of the square room, S plus one is 13 feet, and S minus one is 11 feet. So the room size is 11 feet by 13 feet. We can check by multiplying 11 by 13 and see that we in fact get 143 square feet which fit the 143 one square foot tiles.